Again, I was just taking that leprechaun, bouncing it through the grass. That was really cool. I sat there and watched him eat it. That was, uh, that's as fun as it gets in my book. I felt that, I felt the thump, got a good, good quick hook set, very important. All right, so this video, we're gonna be doing a lesson on, on how to get up in shallow water, even with a big bay boat, and catch, catch these trout. Uh, with a, and, and a jerk bait is gonna be the feature. This is my, my overall favorite, favorite lure for getting up and just prospecting these shallow waters. This one's a little bit, this one's a little bit, it's a decent sized one, but they, we should be able to get some bigger ones. And uh, what we'll be doing, let's get this guy up. It's a solid trout. It's the Alabama leprechaun, right in the mouth. Solid little guy, let him go. So what we're doing is we're using this Alabama leprechaun rigged on this weighted hook. We get a better look, look over here for you it's in the sun. So we've got this Alabama leprechaun. It's a five inch jerk bait rigged on this weighted hook. This is very weedless and we have some shallow grass patches with some little potholes. You can look over here, you can see this little white, this little white spot right out there. Um, that's what I'm looking for. So those trout, they're gonna be holed up in those, uh, in those potholes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rig this weedless. So check this out. So get that, that point of the hook right there in the bait. And this is an absolutely deadly lure for fishing up in the shallows because it enables me to do finesse fishing while also covering ground quickly. So I can get it right there in the grass without getting snagged. And those trout absolutely love it. And redfish snook to really everything. And so right now I'm on the edge of the flat and I'm just gonna take it slow. It's probably about four or five feet deep there. So I've got to let, give it time to, to slow down. These, these, uh, this lure with this weighted hook you know, sinks very slowly. And so I'm just doing a little small, a little you know, slow and little dart motion right through that grass. And if there's a fish there, it's gonna eat it. Oop, there we are. That's a nicer fish. So it was right on the edge. You can see these potholes. I actually see a, a decent sized trout right there too. Right on the edge. Ooh, look at all those trout down there. There's a bunch of trout. That one got off. And there are a bunch of them right on the edge. Let's see if there's some more that aren't spooked out yet. So what I'm doing is I'm just getting this thing, just getting this jerk bait and letting it sink. And just to give it some nice little twitches and give them time to eat. This there, uh, this is a, a pretty legit cold front just came through. Oh, there we are, got him. Oh man, missed him. Legit cold front just came through and these fish are not gonna be very, uh, they're not gonna be chasing down baits, but if you get a good jerk bait right in their face, they will absolutely, absolutely eat it. This is a smaller one. There are some nicer ones in this little school. That's just the power of these, of these jerk baits. You can, uh, the fact they're so versatile. This is, I even use them bass fishing too. Like these are, these are excellent, excellent lures. And after you get them, obviously you just gotta make sure you re-rig it so that it's ready for more action. Let's see if we can find some of its bigger friends. And they're right on this ledge here. And what I like to do when I'm fishing the deep stuff with this bait, right, it, it doesn't go down very deep. So I do a rod down retrieve when I'm fishing the edge. So I'm around this outside edge. There's this right on the edge of this flat. So rod tip down and I'm just waiting to feel that thump. Oh, just felt something came up and bunched. Oh, there we are. Oh, he lost it. So a lot of times when you miss them once, just, just keep doing the retrieve and they'll come back and get it. We're really close to us, so it probably won't get a second strike there. So yeah, they're just not eating it very aggressively. That one just ate now. Got him. There we are. That's some, another small one. So yeah, it looks like the outside of this flat has mostly small ones. We're gonna get up there in a little shallow water, see if we can't see if we can't get them a little bit bigger. But still a lot of fun. are yeah solid fish there we'll get the light on them there it looks you know it's keeper sized trout if it was if it was season all right hook out let this guy go and bait is ready for more action there's a bunch of trout out there oh got another one <laughs> very next cast and again just a nice slow retrieve 
just bouncing right off of the grass. Even though these fish are cold, they just cannot pass up an easy meal. Another solid one. We are getting a little bit bigger. Solid fish. Oh, just to show the, uh, the, t the rod tip action, it's just a little double twitch. Double twitch and then let it fall. Double twitch, let it fall. And as it's falling down, that's when the magic happens. That's when almost all the strikes occur. And it's, it's super important to have a really nice sensitive rod, thin line, so you can feel what's going on. You can actually feel the difference of, of, a, uh, of a thump versus a tap, right? Thump meaning a good fish, redfish, sea trout, snook, flounder. They thump it, and then little pinfish, they just tap it. Tap, 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 as pinfish will do it, and they'll drive you crazy, and you'll be setting the hook every cast if you're, if you're, uh, if you're not distinguishing those, those thumps versus the taps. All right, so when you're up on these flats, very, very important is look for those white patches. So I'm starting to see some some white patches, and the key is to cast over them. Make sure you get at least five feet over them. This is, this is shallow, clear water. These fish are going to be on edge, and they're going to be bigger. And so very, very important is to uh, make sure you sneak up on them. There we are. That's a nicer one. And you got to make sure you sneak up on them, and then get that lure. Get that lure to them before they see you. And this one's definitely bigger. Still not a giant, but this is getting closer to 20 inches. Probably a little bit over, actually. This is bigger than I thought. This is a this was sitting right in that pothole, right where it's supposed to be. And the key is to get it, you get a lure, get a lure in there. And this Alabama leprechaun is is sure is deadly for it. And cast over it, retrieve it through, and it can result in some really nice trout. That's nice. We're gonna let him. Let him get some oxygen. We'll pull him up there so you can see him. This is a solid, solid fish. So again, just for conservation, it's nice to net him and just let him kind of get their equilibrium back, right? We got him, he's not gonna get out. And so just let him, uh, let him kind of get some more oxygen in the system and then we can now come out and bring him up. This is a solid fish. This trout has the leprechaun right there in, the, in his face. Again, I was just taking that leprechaun and bouncing it through the grass, just like I was talking about, and this trout was exactly where it was supposed to be. All right, yeah, there he is. All right, yeah, you can definitely do this too, right? There's no sort of special gadgetry. This is the Alabama leprechaun lure. Just rig it properly, and then find, a, find yourself a, you know, a good spot, and then those big trout absolutely gobble it down. Something about this lure, the big trout and big reds, I've been having an absolute blow with it. So. Let's see if we can do that again. All right, so another good, another good uh, pothole right up ahead of us. I'll actually put the power pole down. There's a couple of them. And crucial to see these from a long distance off. You need to see them from a long distance off, cast over them, and then work that lure through. And if they're in there, you're going to be able to catch some really nice fish. The problem a lot of people make is they, uh, they either don't have polarized glasses or not good glasses or they're just not on the lookout for these things and you don't see them until they're 30 feet away, and by that time it's too late. Really have to get out there and make some really long casts, use some light line, good equipment, and that is a game changer. There we are. We got one. Can't tell what this is. This one hit about just a couple feet off of the pothole. I don't know if it either came out of the pothole or it was just holding up pretty close to it. Let's see what we have here. Another nice trout. Not as big as that last one, but solid fish. Oh, all right, quick release, quick release. That is okay. We were gonna let them go anyhow. And so again, after, after all these fish, rigging, these, these baits are awesome. They, they are extremely good with, with shallow water like this but it's crucial to, to make sure that they're rigged properly. So after every, every fish, just check it out, make sure it's good, make sure it's nice and streamlined. And uh, you'd even put it in the water and uh, you can kind of see if it's, if it's helicoptering or not. I right? just kind of put it in there and give it a couple of twitches and you just want to make sure it's not helicoptering. So this one's good. I'm going to cast back over that pothole. In many cases after these cold fronts, there'll be, uh, there'll be more than just one. 
So we're gonna get this, get another cast up there. See if there's this bigger friend and they're ready to eat. Oh, there we are. There we are, there's another one. That one's just on the open grass. Go get this fella. Another solid fish. Yeah, again, that's the good thing about this, this type of lure is you can, you can do the finesse stuff. But then also when you're not seeing any potholes, we are kind of in an area with, without really any, any potholes, you can, you can just go fast and cover a bunch of ground. Again, again conservation size, we got them in the net, just let them, let them calm down. So I'm deciding not to calm down. I guess let them calm down for a bit. We can get them out. And let's check out trout. Another solid one. Another very respectable trout. Just came up and smacked that leprechaun. And uh, again, yeah, right in the corner of his mouth. I felt that. I felt the thump. Got a good, good quick hook set. Very important. If you wait too long, they can swallow it, and that's not good. Let this fella go. Ooh, there's some reds. I'm going very close to them. Got him. Nice. <laughs> nice. That was awesome there. Just on the edge of that pothole. And I, uh, I saw them. There's about three of them. And that's the cool thing about this clear water. Get out here in this nice clear water. And this lure is the perfect situation for it, where it's, it's calm and clear. This, this doesn't give off a whole lot of vibration and really spook those fish. And you can get up there and finesse them when you need them. Oh, solid red. Let's get this guy up so you can check him out. That's a beautiful red. Get his head up and get him right in the nail net. There we are. Solid red. I would let this fish revive a little bit, but that was just a textbook catch right there. We're, we were going down you know, fishing these potholes and just keeping the eyes up, the eyes open for, uh, for some sight fishing opportunities. Finally, finally that opened itself up. And now we have solid red to show for it. That was really cool. I sat there and watched them eat it. That was, uh, that's as fun as it gets in my book. We're gonna go ahead and get him back in the water. Make sure he's good to go. There he is. Whew, that was cool. All right, but yeah, I just wanted to highlight just how good this type of lure can be when you're fishing, you know, after these cold fronts, let's get that trolling motor off. After these cold fronts, we have this high pressure system. The water's clear. It's a little bit gnarled up. Let me go ahead and fix this thing a little bit. I'll actually show you, show this whole rig. So all it consists of is very basic, right? Alabama leprechaun. This is all slicked out with a fish slime on it. It's an Alabama leprechaun. And then rig it on one of these weighted hooks. So this one in particular is the owner twist lock. This is a three-aught hook with the one at one eighth ounce size weight. The uh, the four-aught size works well also. And so this combination is excellent. This is a very, very good combination. This is my go-to when fishing these types of conditions. When the water's super low, like typically the uh, you know, I can actually fish on top of this bar, and this is all all barren. We have a super low tide, clear water, calm conditions. That's when these, these jerk baits are at their prime. So if you don't yet have this sort of setup, we do carry these in our shop and insider members can get everything 20% off. So highly recommend pick some up. It's great for the winter time, but it's also good for spring, summer, fall. This is an all year round type of bait. So again, if you don't have these, I'll put a link down below where you can go ahead and pick some up. All right, well, that's it for now. I'll leave a question down below if you have any. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the online fishing club that guarantees you'll be catching more fish than ever before while saving money and all the tackle you need. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon.